Hi guys! So this is like my third time filming this video, so let's hope that it works out. My camera is dying and last time it wasn't even in focus, so I'm doing this again and if it doesn't work, I'm just going to give up on this video altogether. So today I'm filming my study tips for pathophysiology. If you don't know what pathophysiology is, it is the study of diseases. It's a class that you're required to take in nursing school. As far as I know, every nursing school requires it. Um, but mine does. I know a lot of girls who are taking it. And I am actually the only girl in my cohort that has not failed one of the patho exams. Now failing is pretty easy to do. You have to get anything below a 78%. And so it's almost like you have to get a B or above or you don't pass. So I'm the only one who hasn't failed one of those exams. And so I feel like I have a lot of good information to offer when it comes to study tips and how I'm passing this class. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the video before my camera dies. So my first tip for studying for patho is printing out the syllabus. Almost every professor will give you the syllabus before the class even starts. Um, you'll, it's something you'll go over on the first day. And I print mine out because it's normally a really good guide on to what to, ex on what to expect for the upcoming exams. So this is my example of my syllabus for our first exam, which was just intro to cellular biology. It was all about just the cells and how they work. It was very basic information. Um, so this is what my first exam was. I print this out and before class, I look over it. I like to know what the teachers are gonna be teaching before class so that I have, so that I have a good idea of what to expect once I get into class. So this is my syllabus. I print it out. I bring it to class. And if I do forget it to class, I will do what I'm about to talk about on a separate piece of paper. But what I will do if I have my syllabus is, is, I, is I take notes on the syllabus and I only take notes over what the professor is talking about. So this is really important. This is my second tip. Only take notes on what the teacher is saying when you're in class. I don't take notes on the PowerPoint. I don't try and copy down the PowerPoint. I don't take notes from the book. I take notes on what she's saying because if your lectures aren't recorded, which I'll talk about in a second, if you're not able to go back and re-listen to what she's saying, it's important to have notes over what the teacher said. Usually the teachers are the ones who make the exams, unless it's a pre-made exam, like an NCLEX, a HESI, or a Kaplan exam. Um, usually the professors make them, and anything she says, she knows what she puts on the exam, so anything she says, she knows she's putting on the test. So pay attention to what she says, especially especially if it's something that the teacher is saying two, three, four, five times over again, it's important information, write it down. So I will just write directly on the syllabus, like um, here I wrote in red. So I'll pick a color and I'll just write directly on the syllabus as to what the teacher is saying. And I think that's important because it gives you a good idea over what to expect because the teacher's only gonna cover information that is on the exam. So this comes to my third tip, record the lectures if you can. My school records all the lectures for us and puts them onto an online database for us to go back and listen to and watch if we want to. And if you have that option, please do it, please do it, please do it, please do it, please do it. Please do it. Um, listening to recorded lectures is so helpful. The more you hear the information, the more you see the information, the more opportunities you're giving it to sink into your brain. So if you listen to it, it's really going to help you further hear it and remember it for later on. Listen to lectures if you can. If your school doesn't record your lectures for you, I recommend just bringing in your phone and recording the lectures on your phone or um, you can sell they you can sell you can buy little recording devices on Amazon for like five dollars they're normally just they look like a pen but they're actually a recording device and you can record your lectures and listen to them that way I just think it's so important to have recorded lectures because you can go back and listen to them and hear stuff that you might have missed before so my fourth tip is to bring colored pens I use so many colored pens I have five billion of them I use so many colored pens because it helps me learn so much better when I have the information color-coded. I can't tell you how many times on exams I have gone back and been or I've sit, been sitting in the exam and been in my head like okay this disease what color did I write that in again and I can see it in my head the color that I wrote it in. So I highly recommend doing things in color if you can get colored pencils, colored markers, colored pens, whatever you want but do things in different colors because it's gonna help it stick into your brain. And this brings me into my fifth tip. Don't read the chapters, don't read the chapters, don't read the chapters, don't read the chapters. This sounds super silly, but don't skim the chapters. In the back of my patho book, which I'll insert a picture of my patho book right here, um, is this little section called um, Summary Concepts. And basically what it is, is bold bulleted points from the book based on what the important stuff was for the chapter. 
These chapters that you're going to be reading are huge. There's so much little detail, extra information. Um, there's so much extra information that the teacher doesn't expect you to know. So don't learn it if you don't have to. So what I'll do is I'll go and read those summary concepts before I read the chapter. And then I'll go through, sorry, and then I'll go through and be like, okay, as I'm skipping through the chapter, seeing, oh, there's a bulleted point. Oh, there's a bullet point. There's a bulleted point. And I skip everything else. I don't read anything that is not those bulleted points. And what I'll do, this is an example, is I take notes as I'm reading. So this was for cell function. So I have cell function in red, and then over here in black, just the definition of cell function. Then I have cell membrane in red and the definition. And I do multiple colors because that can help you remember like what were the bolded terms and what was important information, which is in black, but not as detailed important as the other information in the book. So I will do that all before I go to class. I'll skim through the chapter, um, I'll take notes on the chapter and I'll write it in different colors. And then I'm gonna show you a different set of notes for this part. Then what I'll do when I'm in class, this is a, hi guys. So you probably saw the way that clip ended. My camera died, so I had to go plug in the battery and now I'm back, it's charged for a little bit. I started editing the first half of this video and now I'm gonna continue on to the second half of my study tips video. Okay, so as I was going to show you, um, this is a second set of notes that I took on a different chapter that I just wanted to show you. So everything that's in purple and black is stuff that is notes that I took when I was reading the textbook. And then if you look closely, I went in with an orange pen and put like little dots and wrote um, like little extra things in orange. Um, so over here, over here, and over there. Um, and those, the orange indicates things that the teacher said. And so like I was talking about earlier, take notes on only things that the teacher said. And I think that is so beneficial because if you look like right here, there's only one orange dot right there. Everything else has no orange. And that's because that's information that was covered in the textbook that my teacher did not talk about. And I think that that's so important because these chapters are huge. The textbook is huge. There's a ton of information. There's a ton of information that's being covered in the textbook that the teacher doesn't care about. So don't learn extra information. And that brings me on to my next tip, which I believe is tip number six, I think. I don't really know anymore, I lost track. I believe it's tip, tip ugh. I believe it's tip number six, and that is to not study extra information. There is so much information in the textbook that's wonderful, and it's great to know if it helps you but a lot of it isn't covered on the test. The teachers make the tests most of the time, unless they're a HESI test or a Kaplan test or a pre-made test like the NCLEX. Unless they're pre-made, the teachers are making the exams and they know what they're gonna put on. So if they're not covering information, don't learn it. There's zero reason to because you're just learning information that's not gonna be on the exam. I hope that makes sense. There are a lot of girls in my class that study extra information and then they take the exam and don't pass. And then they sit there and they're like, Oh my gosh, I studied all this extra information that wasn't even covered because it was in the textbook. But the teacher didn't cover it because the teacher didn't go over it. So if there's extra information that the textbook is talking about that the teacher doesn't talk about it, don't study it. It's a waste of your time and it's not worth it at all. As you can probably see, my camera died. I really hope that this video is in focus because I've filmed it multiple times now. It hasn't been in focus. And so if there's a bunch of information that the textbook covers that my teacher doesn't go over, I'm not learning it. I'm just gonna act like I didn't see it in the book. I'm gonna cross it out, I'm gonna ignore it, and I'm not gonna make any more notes out of that because it's not important. The teachers make the exams. Unless you're taking a HESI exam, a Kaplan exam, or the NCLEX, which are all pre-made exams by their own companies, the teacher makes your exam. Unless you're doing one of those scenarios, the teacher makes the exam. So why would you study information that the teacher's not gonna talk about? It's such a waste of time. Please don't do it. So the next thing that I do after I've taken these notes from the textbook and my teacher, I then put them all together in one niece, niece, neat, nice document. And this is what it looks like. I make it all organized. I can't tell if the camera's focused or not until after I'm done filming. I have a mirror behind my camera so I can try and see the viewfinder, but I don't have one of the cameras where the screen pops up and I can see myself. So I have no clue if I'm in focus. So I'm just gonna hope that I am. Um, anyway, I combine it all into one nice document and then I take this and do one of two things. I either make a Quizlet or I make a concept map. And this takes me to my last tip, which is Quizlets or concept maps. If I'm doing an exam that is strictly about diseases, I'll make concept maps. So this is an example of a concept map. 
This is what it looks like. Um, enviable alcohol syndrome is just a disease that can be caused when the mom drinks alcohol while she's pregnant. So what I'll do is I'll write manifestations, which manifestation is just a fancy word for sign and symptom. I'll write physical features, so babies who are born from fetal alcohol syndrome, or born with fetal alcohol syndrome, what they look like. Any other extra information, extra information, extra information, I'll write around. So I'll do that with all sorts of diseases. So this is another one, a chromosomal disease. Down syndrome and Turner syndrome are both, both chromosomal. So I did them all in blue. And again, I'm using multiple pens to help me remember stuff, which is important. So use multiple colors. I did etiology, um, which is trisomy 21. So Down syndrome is caused by trisomy 21, which is uh, three on the 21st chromosome instead of two. And so etiology I did in pink, risk factors I did in green, manifestation, so the symptoms I did in dark blue, and character traits, so what the person looks like, I did in purple. And I did that the same with all of them. So that when I'm taking the test, I can be like, okay, risk factors for Down syndrome. Down syndrome I wrote in blue. Risk factors I wrote in dark green. And I can picture the whole chart in my head so much easier because of the colors that I used. So those are concept maps, and I do those for diseases. Now, if I have an exam that doesn't have any diseases, I'll make a Quizlet. If you don't know what Quizlet is, I'm gonna link their website down below. It's quizlet.com, they have a website and they have an app. They're wonderful, they don't sponsor this video, I have no affiliation with them, I just love Quizlet and I want everybody else to use them if you don't. Um, what they do is make online flashcards for you. So instead of having to fill out these guys, you just type them up in the computer and they're done. And there are all sorts of games you can play, plenty of ways to learn on Quizlet. You can do matching, you can do memory games, you can do matching games, you can do um, written answers, you need multiple choice. There's all sorts of stuff you can do to try and learn the information and I think it's so helpful and such a great resource. Um, the only time I do concept maps is if I'm doing disease, like a test specifically with diseases. And if I have a test that's both, that's generic information that I should memorize and disease-based information, I'm gonna do about, I'm gonna do a Quizlet and a concept map. And I was wrong, that's not my last tip. My last tip, I believe it's tip number 10, maybe it's number nine, I don't really know, I've lost track. Um, my last tip is to do practice questions. So if you don't know, nursing school, almost all questions are application based, which means, say I was talking about Down syndrome, someone's not gonna ask me to memorize information about Down syndrome. What they're gonna ask me is, a patient presents in the ER with this, this, and this, what disease do you think, what chromosomal link disease do you think that they have? and you're gonna to have to pick between multiple diseases. So they're very application-based. So if you can find any pro um, practice questions, I would totally recommend it, whether that's Googling and click style questions. Um, my textbook, I'll insert a picture of it here, has questions in the back of the book, and they have a website that you can go to to practice questions based on the chapter you're learning. So if there's anything you can do to practice questions, I would totally do it and do the questions over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, as many times as you can until you learn the information. So that is my study tips for patho. I really hope this helps you. Um, I wanna say not all my study tips are gonna work for everyone, so if they don't work for you, I'm sorry, but I really hope they do. If you used any of these and they worked, let me know below. Um, I really hope they work well for you guys because they've done you well and some of my classmates well who I talked about. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any more videos. 